welcome i just like to continue my series where the bible does not make any sense i just like to give a shout out to those that have subscribed to my video and those that are thinking about subscribing to my video my friend you will not be disappointed because this is a this is a the, the channel of truth to get to the revelation of Jesus Christ now there's a lot of Jesus but I'm talking about Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ he is the Messiah so when when God made the world he gave us a book and the book come with controversy but this book can save you and this book can damn you so when the Bible does not make any sense and the reason why the Bible does not make any sense because you're looking at the Bible from a carnal sense. You can't read the Bible from a carnal sense and see it in the, in the carnal. You gotta see the book on a spiritual plateau. So the part three I'm dealing with today is the origin of man and the origin of God. The Bible is the origin of God. God gave man the, the ability to write the book, but it was a Holy Spirit that inspired man to write the book. It wasn't by holy, it wasn't by men understanding. It was God divine interpretation to give man the ability to write the Bible. To write the holy scriptures i like to call it holy scripture because the bible was 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 a man-made theme but but you might i might say more bible than holy scripture because you've been taught bible but it's really holy scriptures because the bible says search the scriptures for any you think you have eternal life for these that testify about me so peter now who is peter peter was towards the guy he was the disciple they call him a cousin disciple they call the man that cut off, cut off Marcus' ears. The man that was at the day of Pentecost, and he and he was a preacher. The man that told the man that was at the gate, rise up and walk. And he walked. He said, "Silver and gold have I none, but such I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and he walk." And Peter walked. He glory to God. Peter glory to God was not hung straight up, but he hung upside down. We talk about Peter, the Peter one that have temper, the Peter the one that denied Jesus, but the one that repent and say, Lord, forgive me. So, Second Peter, glory to God, and let's say verse number sixteen. That's Second Peter, verse sixteen. Follow me with your Bible. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. Follow me with your Bible. Hey, glory to God. That's that's Second Peter. Uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 16 and say for we have not followed cunning devices when we made known unto the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty now Peter was an eyewitness he glory to God Mark was not an eyewitness he glory to God Matthew was an eyewitness he glory to God and, and John was an eyewitness and Peter was an eyewitness. And they say, glory to God, verse 17, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when they come such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now Peter was at the, the, the mountain of transfiguration. And Peter said she would build three glory to God tabernacle. Hey, glory to God. So Peter was the one that was with Jesus the most. Hey, glory to God. So Peter say verse 18. And this is a voice which came down from, from heaven. We heard and we were with him in the holy mount. Verse 19. And we have also a more sure word of prophecy. We're unto ye do well that we take heed as unto a light that shineth in dark place of the day dawn and the and the day star rise in our heart knowing this now knowing what knowing this knowing what knowing this that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private 
interpretation. So anybody that come with an interpretation don't receive it. Because Paul say, if a man come with another gospel, let them be a curse. So Peter was saying that know this first, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So you can't say it's not in the Bible. He go to God and it's, God gave it to you directly. No, God gave us everything that we already need that's in the Bible. They know in, they know in private interpretation of the scripture. That's why people say the Bible don't make no sense. Yes, it do because you can't understand the Bible from your feeble mind. You can't understand the Bible from your carnality because carnality fight against spirituality. And that's why we struggle in understanding the Bible because we got to understand the Bible through our spirit realm. The flesh don't want you to know the word of God. Let me say it again. The flesh does not want you to understand the word of God. That's why we got to pray. That's why we got to fast. So the flesh will interrupt us understanding the valitude, the authentic of God. You got to fast. The more you fast, it blasts the flesh. Because the flesh war against the spirit and these are contrary one toward another. That's why Paul say, shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we live any longer therein? So if you are not saved, you cannot understand the Bible. If you're not born again, you cannot understand spiritual things. Just like told, told Nicodemus, Glory to God, you'd be a you'd be a teacher of Israel and not know these things. What is flesh is flesh, what is spirit is spirit. Marvel not that you must be born again. So I'm telling people the only way you want to understand the Bible, you gotta be spiritual. You cannot be a carnal person and expect to understand the Bible. Hey, glory to God. He glory to God. Amen. So, so Peter was saying that know this, that no prophet, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So if somebody try to interpret it privately, it's not from God. Yes, what I say, if anybody try to interpret the Bible from a carnal sense, it's not from God. Because the Bible says, glory to God. That line upon line, piece upon piece, here's a little and there's a little. So everything is in a book, it's in the book. Hey, you, you can't come out in the book and, and expect because they know a private interpretation. Hey, go to God. It's no private interpretation. I don't care if the person been to Harvard, Divinity College, I don't care if they've been to the cemetery, the seminary. My friend, the Bible is of no private interpretation the secret things belong to God but they that re reveal re reveal unto us if you are a prophet if you are glory to God in God's will it's two people that God speak to basically glory to God the deep things the deep things is things that directly from God interpretation and it still line up with the word of God is the apostle and the prophet Hey, glory to God. Yes, God gave it to the apostle and God gave it to the prophet because a prophet is a mouthpiece for God. God trusts the prophet. God trusts the apostle. Now, God trusts the pastors and the bishop and the teachers, but God gives his, his direct instruction to the prophet, to the apostle. Hey, glory to God. Because those people, my friend, they go into deeper death and it's not out the will, it's in the will of God. So when the Bible does not make no sense because people don't understand, you can't understand the Bible from carnality. Carnality is not of God. That's why the Bible says, no flesh shall glory in my presence. What do you think Paul say? When I preach the other, I make myself a castaway because the flesh, they no good thing that dwells in the flesh. The flesh interrupt our sin, glory to God, the glory of God. That's why we got to fast. When Jesus Christ was in the, in the garden of Gethsemane, 
And when he said, I'm going to go pray to the Father. And when he was there praying, the three, the, the, uh, 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 a student of Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, they, was, they were fast asleep. And Jesus Christ said, couldn't you all stay up and pray with me? The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak, my friend. The flesh will bring you down. The flesh will embarrass you. That's why we got to fast, to blast the flesh. And go to God. So verse 21 say, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Man had got, have nothing to do with the interpretation of the Bible. When I say man ain't have nothing to do with interpretation of the Bible, it came by God. God is the interpreter. God is the giver of the revelation of his divine order. It was God. It was not the Pope. Because there ain't no hope in the Pope. It's not your pastor. Because there ain't no hope in your pastor. But it was God. That's why the church of Berea, they did one thing. They searched the scripture and they see whether Paul was preaching the word of God. Yes. Paul, they say, well, well the Paul was preaching the word of God. And it's amazing in our, in our society, we don't go home and we search the scripture. We take the pastor at his word, and that's dangerous. We got to see whether the pastor is preaching the word of God. Because the Bible, even though the Bible don't make no sense to you, because you carnal, don't mean don't make no, spirit, no sense to someone that's spiritual. That's why in the church, there are two kind of people in the church. We got the fan and we got the followers. The followers, they understand the, the spirituality of God and the fan don't understand it. The fan just stay on the, on the sideline and cheer and don't want to commit their life to Jesus Christ. You can't be a fan and expect to go to heaven. I'm, I'm telling you, my friend, fans go to hell. Yeah, when I say fans are go who the fan? The fan are those that cheer Jesus but don't want to follow Jesus. Yes, they cheer they cause they say Jesus Christ is a teacher, he's a prophet, but he's not God. But anytime you are a follower, you believe that Jesus Christ is God. He's God in the flesh and God in the spirit. But if you are a fan, you can understand the value, to it, the authenticity of Jesus Christ. Hey, glory to God. So I'm telling people, my friend, it's not the will of man, but a holy man. I say holy man of God spake and it was moved by the Holy Ghost. And I'm trying to tell people, my friend, there's, there's 40 authors of the Bible. 40 authors. And there's 66 books, 29 and 27. Hey, glory to God. And all through the Bible, there's no contradiction. No the contradiction, my friend, because the Bible is of no contradiction. Hey, glory to God. And I'm going to tell you something, my friend. Hey, glory to God. Remember that when Jesus Christ got resurrected. Hey, glory to God. And it's amazing what those men, though are sad and looking pitiful, Hey, glory to God. And how Jesus came behind them and talked to them. Hey, glory to God. And I'm going to tell you people, uh, that's why I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible more than and I believe man. Because God is powerful than man. But the Bible says, this is what the Bible says. And, and I'm talking about when Jesus Christ got resurrected. When Jesus Christ got resurrected, hey, glory to God. And then it was the third day. Hey, glory to God. And when the Bible say, this is what the Bible say, hey, glory to God. Because these men, and, and, and let's pick up uh, of, of Luke, the 24th chapter, hey, glory to God, verse number 14. And they talk together of, of these things which have happened. Verse 15. And it came to pass that while they commune, commune together and reason Jesus himself drew near and went with them he glory to God but verse 16 but their eyes were holding that they could not know him 
in verse 17 hallelujah and he said unto them what manner of communication are these that have one to another as he walked and are sad we got people that don't believe that jesus christ is resurrected and these men that was walking he glory to god and, and verse 13 said and behold two of them went the same day in a village called emmaus which were from jerusalem about three furlong he glory to god now verse 17 said and he said to them what manner of communication are these that he have one to another as he walked and are sad hallelujah verse 18 and one of them whose name was cleopas answered and said to them art thou a stranger in jerusalem and have not known the things which are come to pass in these last days my friend i'm gonna tell you if you want to know about the last day stay in the bible Hey, if you want to know about the last day, stay in the book of prophecy, stay in the book of Revelation, stay in the book of Peter, stay in the book of John, because we are living in the last days. I don't have to listen to Nakamamas, the man that brought to God tell you about the, the last day. Hallelujah. George Farwell, he brought to God talk about the last days, but it didn't come. Because Jesus Christ said that no man know the time when a son of man going to come. No man. And some of y'all are brainwashed. You packing up food. You packing up stuff. I'm talking about Jamaica now. He, he, he brainwashing the people by saying, you ain't got to store a food, my friend. It's not about food. The Bible say he would never see the, the righteous forsaken or seed bitten bread. So I ain't got to store up. Elijah didn't store up, and the Bible said a raven fed him three times a day. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So verse 18 said, and 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 one of them, hey, glory to God, whose name was Cleopas, he glory to God, answered and said unto him, Are thou a stranger in Jerusalem? Now, now they didn't know who Jesus Christ was. Hey, glory to God. Because Jesus Christ, glory to God, made himself was unknown. And, and has not known the thing which are to come to pass in these days. Verse 19, and, and he said unto them, what things? Now Jesus Christ said, what thing? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and the people. And that's amazing. People still are saying these things and jesus was resurrected from the grave hey glory to god hallelujah hallelujah so the bible say that these men was pricked in their heart but they were sad because it was the third day they didn't believe that when jesus christ was on the earth preaching and Je this was the third day now so they were they have doubt in their heart I bought the books. He go to God. Hallelujah. And I'm and I'm saying this to say this to people that say the Bible make no sense. Listen what Jesus Christ said to these men. He go to God. And the Bible says, verse 19, and he said to them, What things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God. And all the people, and how the chief priest and our ruler deliver him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Verse 21. But we trusted. Now they start saying that we trusted, but it was doubting. And it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done but listen what jesus christ respond to them yeah and certain women also of our company made establishment which were early at the sepulchre and when they found not the body now they found not the body because he was gone 
It's amazing. We as being Christian, it's time for us to believe the scripture. What's to believe the word? If you are if you are a child of God and you don't believe a hundred percent of the Bible, you are not saved. Because you can't look at the Bible from your feeble mind. You can't look at the Bible from your brain. You gotta look at the Bible through the spiritual platform. Hallelujah. Plateau. Hallelujah. If that's a word. And and they found not the body. And came saying that they had also seen a vision of angel which said that he was alive. Hey, go to God. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I believe the gospel. I believe the Bible 110%. Because the Bible is God's word. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 24. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even as a woman had said but him they saw not hallelujah hallelujah verse 25 then he sends to them O oh, fools he goes to god jesus christ called these two men fools why are you calling them fools jesus and and slow of heart to believe all that the prophet have spoken my friend, we got to believe the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. We can't just believe the New Testament and don't believe the Old Testament because the Old Testament paved the way for the New Testament. Hey, glory to God. That's why it called Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament means the lamb go to go slaughter. But the New Testament, Jesus Christ become the lamb. John the Baptist said, Behold, the lamb of God will come to take away the sin of the world. We believe that Jesus Christ was a sacrifice and is a sacrifice. Hey, glory to God. Every time we sin, we are putting Jesus Christ back on the cross. Ah, glory to God. In verse 25 saying, Then he said to them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe. I did, I did, I did something say, it's time to believe. Believe, it's time to believe. The Bible don't make no sense, but I believe the Bible. I believe the book because the book can save your life. Hey, I don't care how much money you got in the bank. My friend, you can put your life on the list. Glory to God because money can't save you. You might have good life insurance, but I come and tell you, if your life not in God's life, my friend, your money can't save you. Hey, glory to God. And when the Bible says, oh, fools and so hard to believe all that the prophet has spoken or not that Christ has suffered these things and to enter into his glory. He glory to God. And he said, And beginning at Moses and all the prophet, he expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. So all the Bible is talking about Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible is talking about Jesus. He said it, my friend. He said the scripture concerning himself. And they drew near unto the village. He go whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone further, but they constant constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent, and he went to tarry with them. He go to God, and it came to pass as he sat and and, and meet with them, he took bread. And blessed it and break it and gave to them and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight what he vanished Jesus Christ is God because he vanished out their sight and they said one to another did not our heart burn with us while he talked with us by the way and why he opened to us the scripture. He go to God, hallelujah. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found eleven together. And them that were with them saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. 
Hey, glory to God. And that's one of the reasons why, my friend, I'm telling you that when the Bible don't make no sense because people don't understand the Bible and they read it through their carnality. The Bible is a spiritual book, so you got to be on a spiritual mind to understand the Bible. You can't read this Bible, glory to God, through your, your flesh. Your flesh is a mess. Your flesh ain't going to let you see the deep things of God. You got to have the Holy Spirit. And if you're trying to read the Bible through your carnality, you're going to read it as an ordinary book. But when you got the Holy Spirit, it will show you the divine order of God. That's the problem we have, and that's the problem we have with controversy about the Bible. They say contradiction about, about the Bible, but the Bible is of no contradiction. There's no error in the Bible. I put my life on the on the line. Say they no error. They no contradiction of the Bible. If they contradiction, my friend, go to my email and email me and I will explain it to you because I got the spirit. That's why the Bible says, if you have the Holy Ghost, the anointing, you need no man to teach you because the same anointing you have, my friend, it will lead you and guide you into all truths. I'm talking about the Bible. When the Bible don't make no sense. Ah, part three. Hey, glory to God. But listen, my friend, and the Bible say, no one, I'm back to first Peter. Hey, I had to say that about these men that were walking to in my ass. How they didn't believe in Jesus Christ, calling them a fool. Do you understand the scripture? It's time to stop being a fool for the world. The world don't understand Jesus Christ. But Christian ought to understand that Jesus Christ is the Christ, the son of the living God. The woman at the well, she said, when the Messiah come, he will show us all things. Jesus Christ said, I that speak unto thee am he. I believe the word. I lay down my life for the world. The word of God. Because the Bible say, knowing this, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any prophet interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost moved these men to write the Bible. Hey, glory to God. Listen what the Bible says. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as it was moved by the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible is called the Holy Scripture. Hallelujah. It ain't called Bible. They know such thing as Bibles in the Bible. But it's something called the Holy Scripture. The Holy Scripture. The man, the eunuch, my friend, he said, what was he, the man talking about in the book of Isaiah? He was talking about himself, but no, he was talking about Jesus Christ shall suffer many things. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for iniquity, the test of peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We are healed spiritually, not so much physically. Because you can be healed physically and decide to go back into the world. But when you're healed spiritually, you are healed from going back into the world. My friend, give me spiritual healing. Spiritual healing is better than physical healing. Hey, God, because a lot of people, they want the blessing, but don't want the blesser. They want the healing, but don't want the healing. I want the healing. I want the blessing and the blesser. Hey, glory to God. And a lot of people, on the sound of my voice, my friend, they say the Bible don't make no sense. That's why they don't read the Bible every day. They don't listen to the Bible every day. The Bible says faith come by hearing, hearing for the word of God. The more you read the word of God, the more you study the word of God, the more you hear the word of God, the more it builds up your faith. And that's why people lack faith because they don't hear the word of God. How can you hear what a preacher? How can he preach except God sent him? So the Bible don't make no sense because you don't make no sense. Hey, go to God. I love the word of God because the word of God, the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. The Bible. 
don't make no sense. Yes, it does. You don't make no sense. Hey, glory to God. I believe, my friend. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God more than I believe man because man changed their mind, but God stayed the same. God said, I'm the, I'm the God that changed not. God don't change. We change. I'm talking about the God of the, of the heaven, the God of the earth. He does not change, but God stays the same. God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. What God said is going to come to pass. I'm so glad God is not a woman. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so glad that God is not a woman and God is not a man. God don't go on his period. God don't go on a minstrel. God don't go on split personality. God is not bipolar. God is not, hallelujah, don't have that personality disorder. God is the same today and forevermore. God does not change. But we change. We change like a dollar bill. We change like the weather. We change. But God never change. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. God don't have personality disorder. God does not change, but we change. We happy today and sad tomorrow. Hey, we remember you, but we don't remember you at all. We got split personality disorder. God don't take bribes, but we take bribes. God can't be bought, but you can buy some people. Look at these prosperity preachers. They ain't preaching the word of God. They preaching what they want to preach because it's all about the money. It's all about the pocket and the pocketbook and the checks and the checks and all that stuff, my friend. But God cannot be bought. God is not for sale. But go to some of these prosperity preachers, my friend. You can buy them. You can buy them with a million dollars. You can buy them with a jet. You can buy them with a car. You can buy them with a mansion. You can buy them with clothes. You can buy them with castle. You can buy them with cash. But God is not for sale. And that's why I, I don't understand agnostic. I don't I understand atheist. Atheist is not an atheist, my friend. You're not an atheist because you believe. How can you say you, you don't believe in existing God? You believe they exist, but that's why you, you this is, is, is believing that he exists. How can you be an agnostic and say you have no proof that there's a God? The Bible said in heaven they clear the glory of God. Hallelujah. There's a God. You just ignorant and can't see him through the spiritual atmosphere. We ain't see the skies. We see the moon. We see the clouds. We see the stars. We see the seasons. You see God. We see the creatures, male and female, animals and birds, all those things. You are seeing glory to God, the creation and the creatures and the creator. There's a God. But you are missing him because you are ignorant. You are missing him because you don't have no insight. You are missing him because you don't have the information. You are missing him, my friend, because you put the input and not the output. The input is God and the output is God. The information is in the Bible. And the insight by you getting saved, by you believing in the God of the universe. I believe God. When the Bible don't make no sense, it does make sense, but you got to believe. Faith activate God. Doubt stagnated. That's why Jesus Christ didn't go to certain cities because of their faith. I'm making this video to tell you that who wrote the Bible? Men didn't write the Bible, but holy men of God spake and was moved by the Holy Ghost. Who wrote the Bible, preacher? God inspired men to write the book. Holy men of God spake and was moved by God. Only God 
can give man instruction to write the 66 book and the reason why 66 books because God breathed inspired King James Version is inspired NIV is not inspired he glory to God give me the, the thou's and the that but don't give me man interpretation give me God interpretation let me depend on the holy spirit to lead me and guide me into all truth let me get on my knees and say god give me your interpretation and we gotta be very careful because if it's not lined up with the word of god it's not of god yes if it's not lined up with god instruction it is not god thoughts hey glory to god Hear me out now. Hey, glory to God. Amen. It got to be God. God got to be the one to give you the interpretation. And the interpretation is in the Holy Scriptures. Anything that's out of the Scripture is not of God. God got to give it to you in the book. That's why God don't speak audible. God speaks from his word. Jesus Christ gave the devil the word. He gave the devil Deuteronomy 6 chapter. He gave the devil, glory to God, a, a, a Psalm 91 verse 10 and 11. Because the devil trying to use the word on Jesus. But Jesus Christ was a was an ark. He was a great person, glory to God, to give the devil the scripture. And the Bible said the devil depart for a season. We got to give the devil the word. We can't give the devil uh, glory to God incense and holy water and cuss the devil out and try to shoot the devil. No, my friend. The Bible says our weapon, our warfare, our carnal, but mighty through God pulling down a stronghold. Yeah, get away the carnal mind, the carnal imagination. You can't cuss the devil out. You can't shoot the devil. You got to give the devil the word. The word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out the mouth of God. Labor not for the meat that perish, but live for the meat endure to everlasting life that the son of man going to give. Why do you think the devil don't want you to read the Bible? He wants to put you to sleep every time you pick the Bible up. He want to put you to sleep. Every time you pick the Bible up, your phone will ring. Every time you pick the Bible up, you'll get hungry. Every time you pick the Bible you got to use the bathroom. Why? The devil don't want you to know the word. Because if you know the word, you become a threat to his kingdom. Yes, you become a threat to his kingdom if you know the word of God. That's why the devil don't want you to remember. You want to remember all the lyrics and the song. Remember this and remember. But when it comes to the word, he don't want you to remember. Because the Bible says the word if I hid in my heart that I may not sin against God. He don't want you to know the word. He wants to know every word, but not the word of God. Because Jesus Christ said, I send forth my word and heal them. My word are spirit and they are life. He don't want you to know the word. He wants you to know everything. He wants to know every song that Kirk Franklin sing, every song that Yolanda Adams sing, every song that Israel sing. But when it comes to the word of God, he don't want you to know the word of God because the word of God is life. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man come to the Father but by me. He don't want you to know the word when the Bible don't make no sense. It makes sense. Look at it. The Bible makes sense. He tell you how to dress. Even though we dress like Jezebel, he tell you how to speak. He said, don't be hung by your tongue because he say life and death in the power of the tongue. He tell you what to see. He say, if your eye offend you, pluck it up. Don't take your eye, turn away from it. He say, if your hand offend you, cut it off. Don't cut your hand off with a, with a machete or, or, or a knife, but turn away from it. When the Bible don't make no sense. The Bible makes sense because, my friend, the flesh don't want you to know the word of God. The flesh wants you to know sex. It wants you to know sensation. It wants you to know secularism. But it don't want you to know the word of God. Because the word of God can take you places that the flesh can't take you. Man should not live by bread alone. Bread alone means what food? But we should live by 
the spiritual food. The spiritual food is the word of God. The spiritual food will make you alive rather than dead. Why do you think so many dead people in church? Because they're not, they are malnutrition from the word of God. Are you malnutrition? When the Bible don't make no sense, my friend. I'm here to tell you the Bible makes sense, but you are you are using nonsense because the Bible comes from a, a spiritual place. God is spirit, and they that worship him but worship in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such a worship, God is a spirit, and they that worship, they that war, must war in the spirit and not in the flesh. The flesh to be carnal mind is death, but to be spiritual mind is life and peace. Give me peace, Lord. I give you the Holy Spirit. Seek the Holy Spirit, friends. Speak the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit bring life. Why do you think so many dead people in church? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit to be alive. In God, when the Bible, when the Holy Scriptures don't make no sense, I'm telling you, it makes sense. But man, woman, don't make no sense. When the Holy Scriptures don't make no sense, I thank God for the Holy Scriptures. I thank God because, my friend, if it was not for God that was on my side, I don't know what I would do. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. When I look over my life, I can say, if it was not the Lord that was on my side, may Israel now say, I don't know where I be. If the Lord wasn't on my side, I'd be a ship without a sail. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank God for the scriptures when the Holy Scriptures don't make no sense but it does if you have the Holy Spirit if you have the Holy Spirit not Casper not the worldly spirit but the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit give you life it give you another sense that is not nonsense. Ah, when the Holy Spirit, my friend, he said, quench not the Spirit of God because you are sealed unto the day of redemption. When the Holy Spirit don't make no sense, grieve not the Holy Spirit until you, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said, take not the Holy Spirit from me. You know why? Because if you have not the Holy Spirit, the Bible says you are none of His. You're in the church. That's all you're in. You're in the building, but you're not in God. When the Holy Scriptures don't make no sin, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, bless this person right now. Let him understand the Word of God. Let him understand the Scripture. Let him understand that they got to be in the Spirit of God to understand the Bible, the Holy Scripture, come to give us life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Bless this person right now. Let him not be the same after hearing this part three. Bless them right now in the mighty matchless name above all name. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Bless right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.